Hi, everybody. So I think Craig's going to get us started with a quick demo um, on how to get connected with Microbit. All right. Jump right in. So we don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to try to move quickly, but give you as much information as you need to, to get up and running yourself. So I'm going to start sharing my screen here. And then hopefully you all are able to see this now. I, I'm going to lose the chat, but it looks good. Um, so the first step in getting your micro bit ready to talk to Scratch is just to head over to the Scratch homepage. That's scratch.mit.edu. And then you'll put a slash micro bit in the address bar. So we'll post that in the chat. But this is really the landing page for just starting to get up and running with the micro bit. There's a couple of steps. Um, right now it supports Windows, Mac, Chromebooks, or Android devices. Um, so to, to do this, you just have to go through the little install step, um, and this just lets uh, Bluetooth devices talk to Scratch in the browser. So just make sure if you have one of these systems, you go through this step first. I've already done that, so I'm going to skip right past that. And then the other step for getting set up is just to download the uh, Scratch microbit hex file and just drag and drop that over to your microbit. This is just a one-time step, so you know if you're only using the microbit for Scratch, you just have to do this initially, and then it will know how to talk to Scratch in the future, um, unless, of course, you repurpose your microbit for something else like one of the other coding platforms. Um, so I've already done these steps ahead of time, so I'm just going to skip right past this and go right into the Scratch editor, so I can just start to show everyone how you can use the microbit with Scratch. So once you're in the Scratch editor, the first thing to do is to click on the Add Extension button. That's right down here in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, so click that blue box. And you'll see this brings up a list of uh, new extensions or new blocks that you can add into your Scratch project. So I definitely encourage you to try out some of these if you haven't already. Um, you'll see the microbit is in the list here. And we also have some other extensions that you can uh, mix and match with the microbit, like text-to-speech or Google Translate are, are really fun when you combine these with a hardware extension like the microbit. Uh, but today we're going to focus just on microbit, so I'm going to click on that. And now we can see it's looking for my device. So like I mentioned, I already did those setup steps. So what I'll do now is I'm just going to plug in my micro bit to power. Means I'm going to put the battery pack on my micro bit. And now I know you can't see me right now, but my micro bit is just, it's telling me its unique name on the screen. So I'm going to hit refresh. And since I'm the only one sitting here with my computer, I can match up this name G-E-V-I-G -E with what I'm seeing on the micro bit matrix. So so this is just how you'll pair up your micro bit. And if you're in a classroom setting, sometimes it's a good, uh, good tip to just take these and put them on a little sticky note on the micro bit so that you can refer to them pretty quickly in the future. So I'm going to click Connect. Okay, it says I'm connected, and my micro bit looks good. So now that I've got my micro bit connected, we can start to do things like this. So I'm going to take out this block when A button is pressed. And if you have a micro bit in your hand, you can look down and see that they have both an A and a B button labeled. So one of the things I like to do to start out is just do something like, when the A button is pressed, change color by 25. So let's see if that works. All right, so I'm going to hold this up because I guess maybe some of you can still see me. So, And as I press that A button, the cat changes color. So there we have this connection to the physical world that easily by just snapping these blocks together and connecting to the micro bit. Um, one thing that you'll notice that's a little bit different about Scratch with the micro bit is that I'm directly controlling my Scratch project on the screen. So once I pull the power out of my micro bit, Scratch no longer knows how to talk to it. It's more of a direct control mode than like download and run like MakeCode or some of the other platforms that you might be familiar with. Um, and we think this just provides an easier entry point for kids or, or people who haven't experienced this kind of making before. Um, so that's the A button. And like I mentioned, the micro bit has A, B, or any. So if we say any, now I can press either A or B to make the cat change color. Uh, but now I'm going to show you this next block, which is my favorite. This is the movement blocks because the, uh, the micro bit has an accelerometer built into it, so we can detect motion. So anytime I move my micro bit around, you can see the cat is now changing color. So it's happening really quickly because when moved is very sensitive. So if I just set it on the desk here and I tap on it, now it changes color. So it's a really sensitive block. And then I'm going to try one of the other ones. We have when shaken. Give it a shake. And now you see, notice it's a much harder action. I have to actually give it a good strong shake to be able to trigger that. But these are just great ways where you can start to incorporate motion into your project. And I'm going to show you one more just because I have so much fun doing this one. I'm going to go into the new sounds library. So if you go up to the top in Scratch, you can click on sounds. 
and then I'm going to click the blue button down here, and I know what sound I'm looking for. You can look through the, the library here, but I know that I want the boing sound effect. So I'm going to go for this one. You, you probably, I don't think I'm sharing the sound from my desktop, so I'm guessing you probably don't hear this, but I'm going to bring that one in so that every time I jump, it plays the boing sound effect. So now I'm going to take my micro bit, I'm going to stick it in my pocket, and now every time I jump around, I can hear a boing sound effect. So I've essentially given myself a really cool sound effect, which is just one of the many things you can do with the, uh, with the Scratch extension. So there are ways, you know, of outputting to the micro bit. You can print text on the screen. And there's a whole lot of other things that you can do um, as you start to play around with this. But if you're just getting started, I'd really, I tell you to focus on these ones. We call these hat blocks. They have a rounded top, and they're called hat blocks because they sort of go on top of the stack. They start everything off just like this. So that's just a very, very quick overview of how you might start to use the micro bit with Scratch, but now we're going to show you some specific demos of how you might do that. Hi, everybody. So I'm um, sorry, I had I popped off, I was popped off the call, and I'm back on. Um, can you hear me okay? Great. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and um, show an example. Uh, a game controller at play. Um, so, so the game I created is called Catch the Rainbows. Um, and so the first thing that I did um, was created a little scoreboard. Um, you can see here, today we are catching some good luck. Um, so I used a basic variable um, to create a score. And I told the micro bit, well, I'll show you what it does first, and then I'll go into a little bit of the explaining. So I have my game controller here. It's a nice big rainbow with some felt, fun to hold on to. It feels really good. Um, so I can tilt my rainbow and get it up into the bucket. And then my, my good luck score goes up. So we'll get a little bit more good luck. And then I'll give you a little sneak peek into the code. So if we go in here um, and look at the block stacks that I used, um, I relied on when tilted, right, left, front, or back. Simply change the direction of the sprite and move three steps each time. Um, and one thing that's really handy in uh, Scratch, when using Scratch, is that you can actually add comments to your coding area. Um, so each of the block stacks that I created, I added a comment that kind of explains what each of the block stacks do. Um, so just to take a look at the second block stack here, kind of read through the code. Um, so when the green flag is clicked, we start at good luck zero, which is very sad. Um, it shows the rainbow sprite. And then every time the rainbow sprite is touching this blue color in the bucket, it plays the magic spell sound. It changes good luck by one. And then it hides. And the reason it hides is because I want the rainbow to go to a new place and show up again so that I can keep ca capturing that good luck. It's 2020, we all need good luck this year. Um, so that is my project and um, I will pass it on to Kristen. Hi everyone, I'm about to share my screen or I'm, I might already be sharing my screen. Can you all, can JC or um, Craig let me know if they can see my Scratch project? Verbally, I can't see you. Uh, I, I can't yet. Oh. Um, I'll go back. Um, I can see myself. Uh, share screen. Okay. Um, all right. Sorry about this. All right. So now hopefully you can see my scratch project. Yes. Yes, we can see it now. Yeah. Cool. Looks good. <laughs> all right. So I made kind of, and I actually wanted to let you all know, we also are going to share a link to a document that has all of our code and everything in it. So if you're wondering how like JC's project works and or anything like that, um, we're sharing our code with you all. 
So I created kind of like um, a choose your own adventure story and I have like a wand and mine's kind of magic themed. So I'm just gonna click play and kind of play through it and then show you um, how it works. So I'm gonna click the green flag. And I end up in the witch's lair. And she is looking for her magic crystals and asked me to point my wand to start my search. And so if I point my wand. The crystals. You can either do my bidding or go to the frozen tundra and ask the Yeti. Press your magic wand to decide. This little elf appears and it gives me some instructions that I'm not sure you heard. I kind of couldn't resist and I also use text to speech. So he, the elf talks in a little elf voice. And what it did was ask me to, it gave me two options. So here, if I really wanted to, I could do like a um, fun, choose your own adventure. Um, and one of my options I think I'm going to pick is to go to the frozen tundra and get the crystals from the Yeti. So I'm going to press this button. Hello. Here are the crystals you seek. So then that, that button took me to, to this branch of the story where I'm getting these crystals uh, from the Yeti. Um, now I'm going to quickly just go over my code. I kept it pretty simple with my code. Um, I played with my display a little bit that you can see that there's like a little heart on my wand. Um, I actually mounted my micro bit in here upside down. So my heart is upside down, but you could kind of code all kinds of story clues or, or and things like that into this um, display on your micro bit and make that a part of your story. Um, and then my wand works when Could I shake it. You can either do my bidding or go to the frozen tundra and ask the Yeti. Um, Press your magic wand to decide. So, and then I have that A button, but I could do an A and a B button and have different branches of my story there. So I've kept my um, code pretty simple. Um, so I'm actually gonna go back here and, and stop sharing my screen and uh, pass it to Craig. All right, so now I'll share my project and there will be more jumping. So you'll get to see me jump around a little bit more. Share again. All right, so for my project, um, I decided to make a little bit of uh, an activity tracker project. Um, and this is something that we have fun doing with kids because they get to design the micro bit into like a wrist strap or something, some way to attach it to their body um, and then interact with this. And it's actually fun to ask kids, you know, what is an activity tracker? Because um, many of them know it as a Fitbit, not as an activity tracker, but it is fun for them to start to think about how could they code their own instead of use something that's pre-built on the shelf. So I'm going to go ahead and connect my micro bit. And you're probably going to start to see this happen right away. You'll notice my cat looks like it's running because I'm moving. So anytime the micro bit moves, you notice there's a movement variable and that's counting up. And the trees are moving by to show me that my cat is like walking and he's moving along with me. So as I move the micro bit, movements are happening. And now we're going to see what happens when I jump. So I'm going to put it back in my pocket and let's give it a jump. All right. And you probably didn't hear the boing. There is again a boing. Uh, but now the cat jumps along with me. And on the screen, I see the variable jumps is counting up. So this is just a way where I can start to take these physical movements, send them into the screen, create a project around that, and then keep track of this data for something that you might want to use it for later. And then finally, what I did is I made it so that the A button will reset the counters. So if I press the A button on my micro bit, you notice my movements and my jumps reset back to zero so I can start over again. And my B button plays energetic dance music to keep me motivated as I'm running and jumping around. All right. <laughs> so just to show you a little bit of the code here. So when moved, it's very simple. I have a variable called movement. And any time the move is detected, it changes that by one. And then it goes to the next costume. And this next costume block is what's giving that cat that running effect, which is really neat. Um, and then when jumped, again, we're starting that sound boing. We're adding one to jumps. And then these glide effects, watch, I'll disconnect them just so you can see what these do. These are giving that jump effect to the cat. So this says glide up a little bit and then glide back down. And that's what's making these jump effects. And then again, A button, it says reset, which I have up top here. And that just says stop all the sounds, stop playing the energetic music, and then set movements and jumps back to zero. And then finally, here's my B button playing that energetic music so I can get motivated. Cool. I'm happy to share a little bit about the resources and actually I'll paste a link to, we created a document that has a little bit of info about um, the projects that we just shared with you. But then also if you head over to that doc and I'm not going to screen share just because um, I want to be able to keep up with you all in the chat. 
But if you head over to that doc and you scroll down past um, all of the kind of block stacks for each of our projects, you'll actually see um, there are a bunch of resources. So um, we created a studio for this workshop and I think Andrew was asking um, how to share their microbit projects. So you can share your projects in that studio. Um, there are microbit cards um, for using microbit with scratch that have some really kind of fun different interactive instruments and all kinds of fun things there. Um, there's um, the scratch page for microbit with Craig showed you to kind of help you get set up. Um, yeah, so there's a kind of a bunch of uh, different resources here that you can use, um, whether you're, you know, kind of creating a studio for your own project or you need inspiration for how you might want to use microbit. Um, there's a bunch of different stuff here um, for you to check out and look at. Um, and then obviously like your kind of go to spot for getting set up with microbit and scratch specifically is that um, scratch.mit.edu slash microbit page. Oh, and just to call it, we so also have some I think um, we we were so worried about not having enough time that we really quickly. Um, we do have time now for a Q and A. Perfect. I think so I might be freezing. I'll uh, I'll hop in real quick. Um, I I think. You, you all did a wonderful job of answering our questions in the chat. I think the one question that wasn't addressed, and we might have a few more uh, flowing in within the, the next couple minutes since we have some time, but one uh, was just to verify that Scratchlink Scratch now works with Chromebooks. So do, do we have any feedback on if that's confirmed or? Um, that's right. Scratch does work on Chromebooks with extensions now. You have to get the uh, specific Chrome OS app, and that includes the Bluetooth support in there. Um, there was a question in the chat I just noticed saying that their Chromebooks didn't have Bluetooth, so they were asking if the extension could be used without Bluetooth. Um, unfortunately, hardware extensions with Scratch right now only function with Bluetooth. So um, one thing you might consider, though, is there are some low-cost Bluetooth dongles. You just need to make sure that they support Chromebooks. And this might be a way where you could extend support on your existing technology without having to get you know, new Chromebooks. Um, but as of right now, they are Bluetooth-only extensions. Uh, I can answer this other question we had from Alexa that was um, after you've connected it to Scratch using the hex file, can you connect it to a different platform? Um, absolutely. All you do is just drag a new hex file over. That will overwrite the Scratch one. And then if you want to come back to Scratch in the future, you just have to drag the Scratch hex back over. Uh, they'll just easily overwrite each other. So it makes it really simple to try all the different platforms. Perfect. And with that, I don't know if we maybe want to give a, a couple more minutes just in case there is. Oh, so we have a, a request from uh, Maximilian. He's asking, could you run through the technical background of Scratch Link? Um, Sure, at least at least briefly, we can just mention that Scratch Link is kind of a, a system tool that runs on the back end. Um, it, it's really invisible. So once you've installed it on your system, you'll just see a little system tray icon for it. Um, and all that does is it allows Scratch in the browser to talk to Bluetooth devices in the physical world uh, because browsers can't directly communicate with Bluetooth that well. So, so Scratch Link is really just something that runs on the back end. It's not something you have to interact with or, or actively be using or anything. Perfect. Thank you. And we have a question from Andrew McDonald asking if there are any plans for either uh, Linux or Raspberry Pi. Um, so right now there's no concrete plans. There's definitely um, some folks who are interested in, in starting those explorations, I would say, but we don't have any sort of uh, concrete plans to officially release the extensions for those platforms at this time. All right. Thank you. And we have a question from Katie asking where they can find the tip cards and is it possible to get the code for the activity tracker? Yeah, so the tip cards, um, all the cards should be listed right at the bottom of that um, making and moving with scratch and microbit document that we shared out. Uh, we can put, post links here in the chat just to make it a little bit easier for you, but there are a few different um, card resources there linked in the doc. So you can get everything right at the bottom there. Perfect. Thank you. And a question from Omar asking if there's a way to simulate the scratch slash microbit if you don't have a microbit. 
Yeah, we don't have a, a built-in simulator like you might have seen with MakeCode, which is just such a great feature. But one thing you could do is you can actually switch out the existing blocks. So if you don't have a micro bit, instead of using when or A or B button is pressed, use the keyboard keys instead. And then later when you get access to a micro bit, you can just switch those blocks out. Um, that's one way we've seen people do that if they don't physically have a micro bit. Okay, perfect, thank you. And a question from Jens asking if there are classrooms like in MakeCode. Yeah, um, JC or Kristen, any, any updates on Scratch educators? We don't have classrooms in the sense like MakeCode does, but I'm just curious if there's anything there. Yeah, not at the moment. I think one really powerful tool to use are just um, Scratch Studios at this point in time. Um, I think are a great way to kind of help your students share work. You can, if you have an educator account, kind of um, manage your classes that way and have all your student accounts in like one group that way um, associated with specific Scratch accounts for your students. Um, and I can actually share a guide. I'll paste a guide in actually maybe to our, our larger document. I can add some information um, to our guide about um, educator accounts. So if that's something you'd like to set up for yourself, you can set up an educator account. Um, that way, but I think the easiest, fastest thing is, is just to kind of set up studios for collecting and sharing student work. Perfect, thank you. And we have a, a question, and this will probably be our, our last question uh, since we're running on time here. So what do you suggest they use for a whole class of 30 micro bits? Um. I guess is the suggestion asking like how to use 30 micro bits in a classroom's environment or I know with Bluetooth things can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Um, so that's why the tip I had suggested of getting like a label maker and just putting little labels with the unique name of the micro bit is a really handy tip. Um, it makes it a lot easier to get connected with them in the future. Um, but other than that, yeah, you, I mean, studios are one great way to organize projects, but it, it is a little bit of a challenge, I think, organizing 30 Bluetooth devices in a space at one time. Uh, I Oh, go ahead, Chris. Well, I was gonna say one one great way to I think to deal with that challenge, especially when you're just just getting started on an activity with students, is to have them work collaboratively. That way, you're not kind of trying to manage quite as many devices. I know that's like one thing that's kind of made things. It's kind of like the good test run to have kids work in groups. That way, you have fewer devices um, and fewer technical issues. I think has always been helpful for me with that sort of thing as an educator. Um, but definitely, uh, Craig's tip about having them labeled with their unique name is super, super helpful. Um, All right. It, Sorry, there were ahead, two Craig. things, if I could just get them in there. So one person asked, we have older micro bits, not the new V2. Um, and this same hex file supports both V1 and V2 of micro bits. So that doesn't matter. You can use either one. Um, and then we had a question of, do you need to pair a particular micro bit with a particular PC? Um, since you just choose the unique name from that list in Scratch, you don't have to say this micro bit goes with this computer. Anytime you can just grab any micro bit off the shelf and get it connected up with Scratch. So sorry, I had to jam that in there. <laughs> no, that's okay. And actually, real quick, just because I think it's an important question, we had someone asking if uh, there's any work on accessibility tools for visually impaired children. So I'm not sure if you have any news on that. I'm not sure if it, if you all can hear me. I've been having some technical issues. Cool. So thank you so much for asking that question. It's one that comes up a lot. Um, and um, it's it's one that we we continue to focus on. And um, what's most helpful for us, actually, um, is if you're able to maybe I can circle back with you. I think it's um, Lucia um, and ask the question um, specifically, what kinds of um, accessibility features would you like to see in Scratch? We know that um, every uh, everyone has different needs in terms of like low vision or no vision. And if you have ideas for how to help us um, make Scratch more accessible in terms of specific features, we'd really love to talk to you about that. That's wonderful. Okay, so with that, I got to be mindful of time because we're running slightly over. So. I would love to thank you all very much, JC, Craig, and Kristen, for an amazing session. There was clearly lots of positivity and affection in the chat, which is always great to see. Clearly, people are very passionate about using uh, using Scratch the micro bit. And so for everyone that's with us right now, next we have our digital lounges. So once you're ready to leave the session, please exit the page and return to the virtual event hub. 
And what I will do in the meantime is I'm just going to toss up my screen here with the with our Twitter handle. So we've got let me just uh, zoom in here. So we've got the Twitter handle for the Microbit Foundation. We've got the Scratch team, which is at Scratch and at LLK Group. And then if you'd like to keep in contact with us at Fair Chance Learning, there's at FCLEDU. So if you have any additional questions that we weren't able to get to in the session, please feel free to check us out there and follow up. And we really appreciate you all for attending and for a very brief but informative and exciting session. So thank you so much, everyone. And with that, I'm going to close out our session. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye.